So welcome back to my channel. I am Ronnie Lee, also known as The Naked Medium. And today it's all about altars. An altar is your sacred space. It's this place that you set up or this object that you fill up with sacred items or a place where you go to connect with the divine, um, connect with yourself, develop your spiritual abilities, meditate, pray, uh, connect with your ancestors. It's a sacred space, a uh, sacred, sacred space. <laughs> You kind of want to look at the altar like you did church, okay? Maybe you still go to church and you know how sacred it is to you, how you treat it, how you um, decide you're going to go in there and speak or how you're going to uh, dress. There's certain things you wouldn't do inside the church. So your altar is like a representation of that, but it's your own personal sacred space, your own personal connection to the divine and whatever else that you're going to do at that altar, it's all personalized between you and the divine. You may go here to connect with your ancestors, give offerings to your ancestors. Like I said, prayer, meditation, go here to just receive healing, to do healing rituals, do whatever it is that you do that is sacred and spiritual. You'll set up your altar wherever you're feeling called to setting your altar up at. There are people that have altars outside in their gardens, in private areas, in their yards because they feel more connected to nature or you just feel like this is a good place for my altar to go up at. Um, I have one in my bedroom because it helps me to be at my altar on a daily basis. I wake up, I do my prayers and my affirmations that I keep at my altar so it kind of you know, it's easy for me to remember to get there and it was easy for me to make it a pattern to get there. So you can have your altar set up in your bedroom. You can have your altar set up anywhere, somewhere around your house, your kitchen, for all my kitchen witches, for all my healers that use herbs and that are in there concocting things, your altar can be in your kitchen because that's where you feel drawn to go. Do not let anyone tell you where you cannot have an altar. As long as that space is sacred to you and you feel comfortable there, you go ahead and set up your altar. My first altar was in my closet. Go figure. I was scared to come out. So a closet tends to be that place that I go to when I'm hiding something. Like if I'm emotional, I go into my closet. Like I used to go into my closet for, you know, creating my stuff, but eventually we get out of the closet and we just come out and say, you know what, this is who I am. You want to take me or you're not. And I don't care if you don't. Okay. Let's get back to altars. <laughs> Think about your intentions when it comes to setting up your altar. Are your intentions to just set up an altar for you to connect with your ancestors and family and friends that have passed on? Uh, are your intentions to set up an altar for your spiritual beliefs and certain rituals that you do? If you know your intentions, then you can start building your altar because your altar is going to be based off of those intentions. So for me, I have what I call my goddess altar. That is all of me. It's the woman that has been transforming to the goddess. And as a healer, I have many items on my altar that represents healing. So once you have a clear intention, Mine's is my transformation as a healer into a goddess. So it's all goddess and healing. If your intentions are, hey, you're a hidden witch and you want to do your magic, honey, you want to be in the flow of the goddess that you are, then you have your cauldron up there. You have different things that are in connection to your intention. If you just want an altar with the intention that here's where I go to just spend some divine time in my sacred space and be feel connected, then you know what your intention is. So you know what you need at your altar. So make sure you have an intention first. Now for me, being that this is my goddess altar and I go here for prayer, for affirmation, for rituals, to bless certain things, um, my um, my prayer beads. So I make these prayer beads and I bless them at my altar. So each one is blessed with a certain energy depending on what the beads are for. And I go there with my oils, my prayers, my affirmations, and I keep them on my altar for a certain number of days so that the energy can be filled into this um, my prayer beads. 
because I'm, I'll be, I give them, y'all will see them on my website towards the end of October. Um, but there's a length of time that I have my things at my altar for certain reasons. Your altar, the more time you spend there and depending on what your intentions are, it's going to carry a divine energy. Now, mine's as a healer. That is the energy that I set at my altar. So I have things like my blue candle, which for me represents healing. Okay. Everybody has different colors that they connect with for different things. This is my white candle. This is my connection to spirit. When I light this candle, spirit, you can come through with your message. As you see this one, I have to get these a lot. I have to get these a lot too, but I do a lot of readings at my altar too. So um, also any figurines that you want. I have my goddess Sekhmet, the goddess of sun. Uh, I, our connection, maybe it's a Leo thing. Love her. She's at my altar. You want to have the elements at your altar too. And any any um, objects which carry a divine energy or sacred to you. I have the Ankh, the symbol of life. And this is at my altar, at the center of my altar. So again, I said, um, you want to have the elements. So this is a feather, the element of earth. I also have a, um, not a flower, I have a plant. I was doing flowers and I still do. I've just been really catering to my aloe plants throughout my house. So I keep an aloe plant at my altar because that represents healing. And it's also an element of earth. Fire, the candles, air, I have incense. Um, let me see. And oh, water. So can you see, you can see the water in there. So I only use rain water or spring water for my um, bowl at my altar, but I keep like water and offerings of food to my ancestors. I always put them in wooden bowls. So um, this I got made in Maui in Hawaii. Uh, let me see, I, of course I have uh, crystals. My altar sits in front of my window. So I'm able to use my window sill for more objects there. I have pictures of my ancestors, which is one of the reasons I'm not showing my altar. A couple of my ancestors tend to, um, sorry guys. A couple of my ancestors tend to blur out their faces when I've done videos, live videos in the past. Don't know how that happens, but I know that they like that space to be sacred and private. So that is why I did not show my altar. Sorry about that. Um, Let's see, uh, what other things? You wanna have the elements, you wanna have things that are, like I said, important to you that represent your intentions. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram at Ronnie underscore Lee, it should be right in the description. Um, also the Naked Medium, you can follow me at the Naked Medium on Instagram. I showed one of my favorite things on my altar. So you can go to my Instagram page and see that. It is, I love it. It is one of my favorite things. It's a house. And I set intentions for that house, but I talk about that in that video on Instagram. You can go there and check that out. I also love music, okay? So to have high vibrations, okay, I'm gonna just reach down like that. I love this. I love having this at my altar, especially when I'm in meditation. It puts me into a trance. I can connect with my ancestors so strong and so vibrantly. So I love that. I love having sound. Um, you can get a bell. You can get a singing bowl. I also have a singing bowl at my altar and essential oils, high vibrating things you want to keep at your altar. My essential oils are used for different prayers and rituals. So I definitely keep a stash there. Another thing that you can do that I do is underneath my table. Okay, so I have a small table for my altar, um, medium size. Underneath my tables where I keep books that I'm studying and also um, re-ups. So my supplies, I got a re-up on Sage. I don't have to go downstairs, it's right under my altar. Um, uh, uh, incense, matches, um, like I said, books, journals, and my oracle and tarot cards all underneath. So everything's neat and tucked away. Whenever you are creating your altar, you want to cleanse your space. You want to make sure that it is clean. So prior to setting up your altar, vacuum, sweep, smudge, Put um, drop essential oils, frankincense, drop frankincense oil around your altar, pray over it, bless that space and call your intentions in for that space before you set it up.
Well, I think you should go to your altar every day. <laughs> it's cleansing, it's connecting, especially while you are on this journey of awakening and choosing to stay woke and choosing to continue to learn who you are and how you operate, strengthening your intuition, healing yourself. The biggest part of this journey is healing ourselves. So your altar is almost like this therapist because that's where you'll go to cry, talk it out, and get these intuitive messages that come to you either through your thoughts, your feelings, um, or just like a quick flash of things. You know, you, you might get a quick daydream, a vision, okay? Remember those daydreams are visions. So when you go to your altar with an issue, you are going to leave that altar with some type of solution. You may not understand what you're getting at that moment, but you're gonna see how it comes to be. So. In my opinion, you should be at your altar daily. However, I'm a realistic person. I know when I first set up my altar, I was there maybe once a week, okay? And it was just like, oh, this is dusty. I got candles melting everywhere. I had to scrape them off my table. And I realized though, because just like your meditation, whatever happens in your meditation and whatever's happening at your altar, that's gonna let you peer in and see what's going on with yourself. So I realized at one point, wow, like Ronnie, you've got so busy with life, your altar is, it's, in a, it's a mess. It's a mess. So what does that say about me? And I realized I had not been at my altar and all I was doing was servicing other people. I was doing readings. I was working with the teens. I was taking care of the kids, the house, but I was abandoning me in here, my soul, my spirit, my messages, my connection. So my altar showed me that. And that's when I said, okay, enough is enough clean the altar, reset that sacred um, energy there. And I have been going to my altar every single day. Now, last week I skipped a day, but trust me, my spirit was on me. Every time I walked past my altar, it's like something just kept pulling me there. And I thought my day was going to suck if I didn't like eventually get there. So I remember that day went by and I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and I was like, I'm at my altar. <laughs> so like I said earlier on in the video, put things at your altar that draw you there. Put your prayers and your affirmations because you know if you do that on a daily basis, you have to go to your altar to do it. That gets you nice and cozy and familiar with your sacred space so you feel as though I got to be there. For me, I have to be there. That's where I feel grounded. That's where I feel connected to all things spiritual, to all things magic, to my ancestors. The connection is intense. And that comes from you making it a consistent habit. Head to your altar with whatever you have. And don't forget to give your ancestors, your spirit team, some offerings. Um, my family's Creole, you guys know that. So I made pralines and I put them at my altar because my great great grandmother did something so amazing for me and came to me in a dream with a very clear message. And I was so excited that I said, I have to do something for her. And immediately pralines came to mind. So I made the pralines and my mother said, these taste like your great grandmother's pralines, which I'm sure she got it from my great great grandmother. And I'm like, yeah. My pralines are bomb. So I left them at my altar. I gave them to my great great grandmother. I left them in a wooden bowl at my altar. Now, if you give offerings, you can do what you want. You can dispose of it as you want. But in my belief, you're supposed to get rid of it after 24 hours and you bury it. So you give it to the earth. So, yeah, I made pralines and I told my kids, I was like, make sure the neighbors aren't watching me. So then keep watching me burying stuff in the ground. Like, what is she down there doing? <laughs> I swear to my neighbors, it doesn't matter where I go, okay? So I need to have acres so I could just be out and do all my weird spiritual goddess stuff in private. But anyway, you should be going to your sacred space as much as possible. Just like you get in that shower every day, you should be at that sacred space every day. Sacred space, your altar, this is not just for women. I know my gods are watching and I love you for having an altar. Let me keep it real with you gods. When a man tells me he has an altar, honey, I'm like, how can I marry him? I think that is so attractive when a man's like, so I was at my altar the other day, like just sitting there meditating and receiving. And I'm like, what? You got an altar, boo? Damn. <laughs> That's hot. So 
to my gods, keep up with your altars. And if you don't have one, how are you going to be a god without an altar? Okay, that's like a pastor not having a church. Where are you worshiping at? Where is your connection? I know we can meditate in bed. I know we can just love and be connected to the divine anywhere where we're at. But that altar, that is your space. It's like a magician and his stage. That's where you perform. So do your thing, get your altars together. And I just want to say thank you for watching this video. And I encourage you all to continue on this path because I know that it takes courage to stay woke, deliver messages to people and to go against the grain because you feel free here and in here. I know how it feels to have the, like, it seems like the rest of the world sleep. So it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of passion and my prayers go out to you and I just want to inspire you because you inspire me. So let's just keep on this path and be these light people that we are. Thank you. I love you all my goddesses, my gods and my unicorns. Yes. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.